Sayyidi, I will be introducing him. The next 30 minutes will be in the English language. Uh, you're welcome to keep your questions coming. Uh, I'll begin uh, first by uh, thanking uh, by thanking uh, my friend Ahmed Girgawi, uh, who is the uh, senior manager live comms at uh, Do. I also want to thank Executive Vice President Abdul Wahid Jum'a uh, of Do, who has uh, also blessed this idea. Do has been our partner in presenting this talk to you. Our guest today is uh, His Excellency Zeki Anwar Nosebe who was appointed as Minister of State in 2017. Um, his Excellency had accompanied the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, may his soul rest in peace, since the 1960s of the last century and witnessed the beginnings of the modern era of the Emirates. He was also appointed as head of media bureau at the presidential court and occupied many other uh, senior positions. He served as assistant minister of foreign affairs and international cooperation and cultural advisor at the Ministry of Presidential Affairs. He was appointed as vice president of Abu Dhabi Authority for Culture and Heritage and is a board member of Zaid Book Award and many other organizations, too many to name. And he, his excellency holds a master's degree in economics and political science from the University of Cambridge in the UK. Uh, what I will be doing is showing you uh, just quick slides on uh, our main stops uh, today, where we'll be stopping uh, during this talk. Um, so yes, share my screen. So basically, these are the six main stops that we will be making in the next uh, 28 minutes or so. Um, of course, uh, one uh, one uh, will find uh, one one can uh, search Sheikh Zayed's images, meeting with other uh, other officials, and you will see that His Excellency Zaki Nusaybi is always there, whether it's a head of state or whether it is a uh, intellectual. Um, His Excellency has been on uh, Sheikh Zayed's uh, uh, side throughout these decades. We will be talking about. The, um, the founding of Al Ain Museum in 1970 as the first museum in the UAE. We will be making stops at the founding of Majid Magazine, which is the most important comic book to come out of the Gulf in the 1970s, as well as the founding of Abu Dhabi TV and Etihad newspaper. We will definitely talk about the cultural foundation and the important role the cultural foundation played uh, since the early 1980s when it was founded. The opening of Al Ain Palace Museum where Sheikh Zayed spent so much of his childhood. And of course, we will talk about the Louvre Abu Dhabi and what the UAE's Ministry of Culture is doing today to support artists. Uh, I don't know how we're going to pack all this in the next uh, 28 minutes or so, but we will be doing our best. Uh, Your Excellency, I'd like to ask you first, can you tell us a little bit uh, about the, the land that you had encountered when you arrived in the UAE in the 1960s? What sort of cultural environment was there uh, in the UAE when you had uh, arrived there? When I arrived in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates in the 1960s, of course, there was very little uh, cultural activity that we could uh, point to. And Abu Dhabi itself as an emirate at that time, by that time had a population of 30,000 when Sheikh Zayed became ruler in 66. After that, it went up to 40,000. Dubai was around 60,000. The other Emirates, smaller numbers. And therefore, we cannot really, they, when I arrived, they were scattered like fishing villages along the Arabian coast. And there was little uh, movement, especially in Abu Dhabi in particular. Dubai, of course, and Sharjah were, were different because they had a different uh, history. In Sharjah, the military airport, the British airport that was there, as well as the camp, uh, uh, made for an uh, active uh, intellectual scene. In Dubai, the trading traditions, they had a number of poets who were very famous, uh, even in the first part of the 19th century, uh, Mubarak Ateli, Salim bin Ali al Owais, and Ahmad bin Salim, Salim uh, bin, uh, Ahmad bin Salim. So there, were, there was a movement there. And I read recently the uh, biography of, of uh, Osha uh, bin Uta, written by our friend and colleague, Dr. Rubash, and where she said he was corresponding with Arab heads of state uh, at that time. So there was movement in, in Dubai and Sharjah, but again, fairly limited. In the 60s, we must remember, there were, the focus were on two major issues. The first is to build, to build the infrastructure, the physical infrastructures that were necessary then. 
I remember in Abu Dhabi, we had no roads and no electricity, no water supply. Uh, there were, if you went to Al Ain, you went on a track that passed through Sabha and San. To Dubai, you had to make sure that you followed the right path not to get stuck in the sands uh, of Sabha as you tra traveled there. So there was this focus on developing the physical infrastructure for the country, but at the same time, the focus you know, on building uh, the political infrastructure, because as we know, in 1968, Britain announced that it is withdrawing its security umbrella from the Gulf region, and the rulers had to come together in order to create a substitute uh, security and political infrastructure. So that was the focus in the early and late 60s uh, at the time that I came here. Although from the beginning, of course, and from his time in Al Ain, Sheikh Zayed was always keen on making education and culture the foundation for his long-term plans and ambitions for the people of the UAE. Uh, Your Excellency, um, I recall reading that there was a group of archaeologists who were invited by Sheikh Zayed, uh, especially from Denmark in the 1960s, who uh, came to excavate around Al Hili area of uh, Abu Dhabi. And I believe that some of these artifacts made their way to Al Ain Museum, which is the first museum founded in the Emirates. I believe that date was 1970. Is that correct? Can you tell us about the impetus for the founding of the first museum in the UAE, which, which this year we're celebrating almost 50, 50 years since its founding? Uh, Sheikh Zayed was always focused on discovering the history of the region. I mean, he himself was a historian. He knew the history of the tribes of the region, the, tri the names of the leaders. He knew them one by one. And he was also keen on discovering the history of the Emirates, the archaeological history of the Emirates. In 1953, uh, Jeffrey Bibby, a British uh, archaeologist, went with a Danish uh, team to Bahrain in, and looking for the city of Delmont, that fabled city that was an empire, a trading empire, uh, sitting on the trading rocks between Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley. People thought it was the place where Eden uh, initially was uh, imagined or preconceived. Uh, and Sheikh Zayed knew of other places in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi that resembled the findings that were found in uh, Bahrain. So he brought the same Danish team at, at that time with his brother, Sheikh Shakhbut, in 1959 to start looking on the island of, of uh, Umm Nar where he went with his father, even as a young boy, on fishing uh, trips. And he knew also in Al Ain, in the Healy, in Bid'a bin Tis'ud, in Jabal Hafid. So he brought uh, these, this team in order to look for the same uh, archaeological finds. And he took them by himself personally to visit the various sites. And of course, they found wonderful also uh, remains of this community that lived here. 4,000 years ago, traded with Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley, and also was instrumental in digging those underground fallage system that brought water from the mountains, passing through different, uh, di you know, over the, uh, over the lands, uh, different scales in order to reach the oasis. So he was keen on uh, discovering this past and then also equally keen on setting it up in a museum. He had instructed us to have that museum built in 1969, before Al Ain even had uh, water uh, supplies uh, and, 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 and roads and other uh, infrastructural necessities. And the reason was he wanted to show that this land had a history, that his people were a people that traded with the rest of the world over centuries ago, that we are open to have exchanges with the rest of the world around us, and we are proud of our own history. And because he wanted to have this as part of the curriculum that is taught to our young people, don't forget that in the early days, everybody spoke of these countries as oil countries, that they are nothing but newly uh, founded lands, if you like, based merely on oil. And he was telling them, no, we have a history and we want this history to be known by others. 
Your Excellency, uh, you made an, an interesting point earlier uh, this evening when you said that the founding of Abu Dhabi Television in 1969, the founding of Al Ittihad Arabic newspaper also in 1969, were both a cultural statement as well as a political statement. Uh, could you uh, elaborate on that point as well? This was a very uh, de de delicate time in the history of the UAE and Abu Dhabi. You know, when uh, Sheikh Zayed started on his mission to bring the the Emirates together in one federation. And they started, we remember, with that historic meeting between him and, he, and Sheikh Rashid of Dubai. They met uh, and discussed the setting up of a federation between the two Emirates. There were huge obstacles on the way to setting that federation for a number of reasons. Uh, there were differences, disputes between the Emirates themselves uh, there were di difficulties and disputes and problems with our major neighbors. Uh, Britain had just announced its uh, decision to withdraw its protection umbrella from this region without giving the Emirates the opportunity, the chance, the time in order to build alternative security structures. And therefore, it was a hard uh, mission for him to bring and people together, the rulers together, working with his fellow uh, the brothers, the rulers of the Emirates, the seven Emirates, although they started with the Federation of Nine Emirates. Now, in order to do this, he needed, in fact, to have a media at his own disposal. There were attacks in those days, especially the Arab world was passing through the Cold War period when the so-called conservative regimes were set up against the so-called revolutionary uh, progressive regimes in the Arab world. There were attacks that were uh, directed at the Emirates as you know, following a colonialist project. Sheikh Zayed wanted us to have our own media that can both inform our people, but also inform the outside world about what we are, who we are, what we aim to do. And he also wanted this media in, to use as an instrument for spreading this idea of education. Again, the focus always on education. How can we use it to educate our young people? You know, the older generation, his generation had lived through many disputes and they knew that there were difficulties amongst some of the Emirates themselves. But the young generation must be brought up in a new fashion, in a new formula. And this is why we started with Majid, for instance, as part of our media campaigns. Uh, Your Excellency, I just have a message from uh, Her Excellency Noor al Kabi, who is uh, saying uh, thank you for this talk and uh, she's passing you her regards and says that we all miss you, we all miss seeing you in person, so we're very grateful for this time that you're giving us uh, uh, at this hour. Uh, Your Excellency, I know that you refer to the 1980s as the golden age, but I'd like to make a point, uh, make a claim for the 1970s. And not, not only it was the, because it, it was the decade I was born in, but it was the decade that uh, the UAE University was founded. It was the decade that Majid comic magazine was founded. These two important, um, I think, organized institutions really uh, were from the 1970s. The UAE was only a few years old then. Uh, how important was it to establish UAE University, even Majid? And if you'd like to talk about cultural foundation here as well, because it was almost within the same period, the idea of the cultural foundation, even though it was opened in 81, the seed was planted in the mid 70s. So from the outset, Sheikh Zayed was set out on a parallel, if you like, uh, progression. The one was political. And that continued throughout the 70s. So the 70s were a difficult decade in the history of the Emirates. I mean, sometimes we look back and think the two rulers, Sheikh Zayed and Sheikh Rashid, met 1968 uh, and, and set up a federation of two Emirates. And then the nine met and set up a federation. Then 1971, hey presto, we had a federation. In fact, there were major obstacles on the way. And they continued into the 70s. And so Sheikh Zayed had one part was how to work uh, towards resolving those issues all the time with patience, long-term planning, uh, showing empathy, saying always, you know, we do not impose our opinion on anyone. We respect everybody's opinion. We need to come to consensus about what, how we need to proceed further. But at the same time, because in his mind, again, the future is in the hands of our young generation. 
he knew that for the older generation, we have our baggage. We come with the luggage that we carry with us. And that those included serious issues. I mean, tribal issues. For instance, Sheikh Zayed always was keen to maintain the tribal infrastructure of the land, saying that the tribal traditions are important. But at the same time, those tribal, if you like, uh, identification uh, had to be subsumed by a, nation, a national one, the Emirati uh, identity. And how to do this except through education and through building the, those institutions you talk about. So the university in Al Ain in 1975, people came, 76 people came to him and said, how do we get a university when our school barely started? We don't have teachers to fill our schools. How do you want us to have university? He insisted on it because he knew that by setting up this institution, bringing to it young people from all the Emirates, they will all grow with their separate identities they bring with them. They could be from Dubai or Ras al Khaimah or Abu Dhabi. They could be a Mazaria or a Awamir or a Manasir or a Bani Yas or a Qawasim. But when they come to university, they are together as Emirati students. And in fact, all our ministers today and the directors of our ministries came through that uh, institution. The same was true with the Cultural Foundation. I mean, he was from the outset keen to, to make culture as a foundation for his education policy. He went back in this to the ideas of enlightenment in the Arab world towards the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century. Education is not just building classrooms, bringing a curriculum to students. You also make part of it is a terbia. In German, they say Ausbildung. Today in our curriculum, we have the ethical learning as part of our teaching curriculum. So he was keen on building this cultural foundation. And of course, the cultural foundation itself was built by this wonderful architectural uh, group uh, that was based on Bauhaus, uh, if you like, uh, architectural principles. And I will tell you a story uh, as, as a postscript to this. Uh, the cultural foundation, of course, opened. It had a number of exhibitions. It had including the first Abdel Qadir Reyes painting exhibition, I remember, Alliance Francaise, we had exhibitions there. Uh, there were lectures, there was a library, all young people from the Emirates came to it. But early in the 21st century, with the beginning, there were some ambitious plans, and if, and in effect, to renovate the whole uh, Husson area, because that, it was the history of the country is in the Husson. I remember the time when I came here and the Husson was the only building that stood out on the island of Abu Dhabi with its wonderful view to the sea. And so there were plans to redesign that area that included sub, uh, removing the cultural foundation in order to build some beautiful and wonderful architect, arch, ar, ar, architectural uh, buildings around. And there we had a very strong uh, movement by civil society led by its women, if I may say, and some of the leading women in our society, they went on a huge campaign, you know, public relations campaign with the decision makers, but not only decision makers, with the juniors even, they went to talk to everybody that this is a treasure that must be kept. Please do not take away from us our cultural foundation. And in the end, they succeeded in changing a, a decision that was already taken in order to build a new site, a new architectural uh, building there. Thank you, Your Excellency. I'm so glad these, uh, these women leaders uh, were, were successful in their endeavor to preserve the cultural foundation. I have so many memories in that building, and it is still one of the most beautiful buildings. You alluded to the architects having worked with Walter Gropius. That's very correct. It is designed by the Architects Collaborative, a Boston-based uh, firm, uh, and, and you believe, I believe you also mentioned the name of an Iraqi architect, Hisham Munir. Uh, and so we are all very grateful, I think, on behalf of everybody in the UAE, and not just people in Abu Dhabi, uh, th that this foundation and this uh, center was saved for future generations. I think the next question I want to ask you is about the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Uh, even though, Your Excellency, that the Louvre Abu Dhabi was uh, inaugurated many years after Sheikh Zayed has passed away. Can we consider this to be part of Sheikh Zayed's legacy uh, in a way? 
yes, in that I believe that Sheikh Zayed from the outset uh, set his mind on uh, building institutions that could uh, promote uh, this cultural flowering that he wanted, especially the young people uh, to experience in the Emirates and to build bridges to the outside world to show that we need to have an exchange of cultures and ideas with the outside world. We need not be afraid uh, of what they bring to us because we have our own culture and traditions and we need to share it with them. And this is why he had the al Ain Museum built in the 60s. Now, the Louvre Museum, it is interesting that Sheikh Zayed in the 50s went on a trip to France and he was like Peter the Great traveling the different countries and seeing what is happening there and saying, one day I'm going to have this in the Emirates. And he did visit the Louvre and going there, he did say one day the Emirates will have a museum like this. And this is in the 50s when oil was not yet discovered in Abu Dhabi and we had the most meager of financial resources. So when the time came for the Louvre Museum to be built, it was truly uh, an ambitious project that I believe is one of the most important in the region. And it was built uh, based on the foundations of this universalistic, uh, if you like, uh, world perspective that Sheikh Zayed had, and that the Emirates is founded on. The idea that civilization is one family, that the human race is one family, and that our civilization is one into which the different cultures of the world the different civilizations have contributed, including our own. So this is not a universal museum that is a copy of the Louvre Paris, but is a UAE-centric museum that showcases the world's civilizations and culture throughout history, showing what brings us together and how we share the same urges, creative uh, needs that other people did. And so this museum became, I really believe, that it, it truly one of the greatest uh, projects, cultural projects in the Middle East, a Middle East that, as we know, is passing so much uh, dark tunnels that we need to see lights like this, iconic lights like this, bring hope uh, to, our, uh, to our frustrated young people. Um, thank you, Your Excellency. Actually, we have 160 people online now. Many of them are sending questions uh, on the public chat, and many are sending me uh, questions privately on uh, on the on the personal chat, on WhatsApp, on Instagram. There are far too many questions to ask, uh, but maybe one question that I think more or less sums up uh, what uh, people are uh, are considering these days. I think. Uh, Everybody has on mind this current situation that we're going through, this pandemic that has affected all of us, especially those of us, Your Excellency, who are in the creative sector, not just in the UAE, but around the world. Uh, we saw some reassuring statements from, from leaders like Her Excellency Noura bint uh, Mohammed Al Kaabi, uh, the Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development, who has assured the, the creative sector of the support of the ministry and the UAE federal government. They've also launched a creatives grant. I think. Uh, for those who don't know about it, make sure that you uh, uh, you look it up. It's very important. We've seen similar initiatives uh, as well in the region. Saudi just launched something. I was very happy to read today. But also we've seen efforts like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, and International Corporations. Uh, they've also launched an initiative where they started buying artworks. Um, so my question to you is, uh, how important is it to support the creative sector now in the UAE? What uh, should we be doing? Any message that you have in the last two or three minutes to the creative sector in the UAE and even beyond? I believe that we are at a crossroad. Globally, we are at a crossroad. Many museums in the West and in the Middle East and elsewhere are threatened with closure. Many people in the creative industry are losing their jobs. Uh, many people of the artists and creative uh, people themselves are frustrated as they stay in their own studios and homes and they do not move. But this challenge that we have, this crossroad, could either be a chance for us to move ahead and be able to face it as an opportunity and then do something out of it, or it could, be le or it could lead to really a breakdown. Uh, of our artistic and creative uh, sector in, in the community. Now, I am proud to know that the UAE government is fully focused on the idea that it would make of this challenge an opportunity. 
not only economically, uh, because economically it has already set uh, vast uh, sums in order to help small enterprises and the, and the banks and the, uh, the companies, but also uh, not only in health uh, innovation, because we are also, also focused on doing things that can help the world community, not only our own community, but in the arts. And I believe the arts and the creative industries are, or the creative sector of our economy is the most vitally important one. I believe, as you have said, uh, Noura bint Muhammad al-Kaabi, al and I salute her here, uh, and believe that she truly is one of our iconic leaders, cultural leaders, who is taking us through this difficult period. Uh, with setting relationships, partnerships with different parts of the world, and, and, and setting up a program for supporting uh, our uh, creative sector. Now, how can we do it? I think there is a beauty on e every each one of us, everyone, uh, patron or lover of art or critic of art, to go out actually and buy art. I mean, Circal Avenue, for instance, has just a uh, number of galleries in Circal Avenue has just gone on a virtual uh, experience where you can visit uh, different galleries and look at the different art. I know a number of artists who come to me and they are going through truly difficult uh, circumstances. I believe it is the government's duty to help. But I also believe it's an individual duty for every person involved or interested or passionate about our creative sector to do his or her own bit in supporting our artists and our galleries. Because I cannot see how the Emirates can go into the future without supporting this wonderful uh, art scene that we have seen flourish and flower in the Emirates over the last 10, 20 years. Um, thank you, Your Excellency. Before I close, I just want to once again thank uh, Executive Vice President Abdul Wahid Jum'a of DU, thank Ahmed Gargawi of DU as well, and the entire DU team who have been so supportive over the past couple of weeks. I also want to thank uh, the team who works with uh, uh, His Excellency Zaki Anwar uh, Nusaybe, who have been very cooperative in making this hour possible. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much for spending this past hour with us, the first half in Arabic, the second half in English. I think I can spend hours with you and I, I wouldn't uh, run out of questions and I would, ha I would have more questions even. The last thing I wanna say is maybe a personal note. I just wanna thank you personally as a human being for everything that you've done for the UAE, for spending all this time in, uh, with Sheikh Zayed, our father, supporting him, traveling with him, translating for him. And you are a wealth of knowledge. You truly are the embodiment of a great Emirati, a great Arab, a great human being. We are so grateful to you. Allah يطول في عمرك ويخليك لنا استاذ زكي نصيبه وان شاء الله نشوفك قريبا. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you everybody and have a good night. مشكور وطول الله عمرك.